Hello guys and welcome to the Stance Report highlight for the week of the 9th of June 2015. And this week we have some new information on the central loot economy as well as the regional rarity of loot. And as always, we're going to kick things off with producer Brian Hicks. First, let's go over exactly what the central loot economy is and what it offers DayZ. Migration of control over what items spawn from legacy method scripts into a more easily and rapidly updated system. This means the dev team can rapidly and without requiring an update to the game, completely change, update the amount of items that spawn. This is done on both a global and a per server level, in the future allowing custom server operations find control over their server and its items spawn quantities without requiring any base modification to the game. Controller over item lifetimes, speed of decay, time of item cleanup, control over how many each item time is supposed to be present in the world, minimum, maximum and nominal, control over item cost, rarity versus spawning methods. The map shown on screen now is regional rarity spawn locations, whereas one would be least rare and four would be the location of the most rare items you can find. Lastly, as development of 057 wraps up, the current iteration of central loot economy will have loot persistence, the saving of spawned and dropped loot as well as tents disabled, while the programming team resolves the blocking issues with item cleanup and rolls out support for per building quantity controls to ensure an even spread of loot across the world, slaying those pesky loot explosions. Oh yeah. This means that when a server restarts, fresh loot will respawn to ensure an enjoyable experience on Stable Branch. That said, the following persistence options are unaffected and will remain enabled. Vehicle persistence and server time persistence, the saving of server time during a restart. Next up, lead designer Peter Nespesny. Let me talk a bit about vehicles and their functionality. Of course, any functional vehicle by itself is an amazing piece of the gameplay, but what will they be without their parts? They will become just an instant object used by survivors to traverse the long distances and that's about it. I believe that without any depth to the maintenance of vehicles, nobody will create any kind of relationship with exactly that truck they are driving for a few days across the land of Chernerus. On the other side, with plenty of different vehicle parts, your approach to a vehicle will be different every time you encounter one. Peter wants to see many vehicles across the map in different states, so you can run into a vehicle that just needs spark plugs to be added in, or a nearly completely stripped one but with the last wheel you need to put on yours. Peter favours such possibilities which offer strong emergent gameplay based on player choices and consequences they bring. One can try to find missing parts alone or group up with friends and strangers to get all the remaining parts for that fabulous bus and run a bus line together. It will spruce up the planning, imagination and strengthen interactions with both players and environment. Implementation of such advanced mechanics of vehicles that use different vital and optional parts has been ongoing for some time now. In the current state we have some of the vital parts functional already, without spark plugs or a battery you simply can't start the engine at all. However more interesting are wheels themselves, wheels can be detached or destroyed while on the truck, and physics simulation is responding properly in such situations by inclination of the given vehicle to the side of the missing wheel and adaptively changing the simulated wheel, radius and friction. Such dramatic changes of course have direct impact on the handling of the vehicle. But nothing is lost in such case as the spare wheels can be mounted back on the wheel hub and get control of the vehicle back on track. From the optional parts there is a detachable interchangeable hood and doors. Now while that obviously don't affect the vehicle behaviour at all, it does add variety to its visual representation. Peter is looking forward to seeing such advanced features finally in game, providing more unique perception of vehicles and their involvement in the gameplay. And that's all for this week's status report highlight for the week of the 9th of June 2015. As always, I'd recommend reading the status report in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that it holds. All links will be in the description, as well as for Daisy TV for your latest Daisy news and information. And I'll see you peeps next time.